Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you're in New Mexico? I am. My parish is in Clovis, New Mexico, which is about three and a half hours southeast of where I am now, which is Albuquerque. Okay. Okay. Did, did you grow up in New Mexico? Yeah, since I was seven. So basically, actually here since I was nine, and my parents are, the contract's expiring. They managed this place for 20 years, and now it's kind of bittersweet because it's probably one of the last times that uh, we're going to be able to have mass here. Yeah. So in, you said it was your mom, right? Your yeah. Mom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we will pray for her. Thank you. Um, her name's Natalia. Natalia. Okay. Um, so um, I think Caroline might have sent you some of these questions, but um, something that I find very difficult or I, I, I never really know how to approach is um, I, I always thought it was focus on myself, right? And the things that I'm doing wrong and try to improve and a lot of self-knowledge, self-awareness. Um, but given kind of like the world and the way things are going, um, how, like, how should we be approaching sinning or maybe if, even if it's somebody in our family that is sinning, like, do you have any, uh, <laughs> recommendations for that or how, how, how you handle that? So it's, it's important to let them know that they're going to hell. I'm not just kidding. Uh, no no i think uh there's there's there should be a continuity in our approach towards sin okay uh with the way that we treat it in ourselves and in others and that's that we have no mercy for sin Okay. because it's the only way to have true mercy for the person is to say i hate this sin because the sin is destroying you Oh. Uh, now, we don't always put it in those exact words, right? But we, we have to make zero compromise with the sin itself. And that starts with ourselves, right? So in our own lives, we realize that we, we have to treat sin like the doctor treats a cancer, where, okay. where we, we, have, we have no room for it because the, the, the doctor loves the patient by hating the sin, and if we start with that with ourselves and we're able to have that same kind of uh, approach toward others, but always keeping in mind um, this kind of there but for the grace of God go I type of mentality right. of, of realizing like, and even for the most despicable sins, like sometimes we can say that for like, oh, if God hadn't blessed me, maybe I would be poor too. But Seldom do we think like, no, if God hadn't blessed me in various ways, I, right. I might be a murderer or a racist or a rapist or like all these terrible things. Right. It's the grace of God that kept me from that. And it's the grace of God that can bring them out of that. Right. So I think we should always have this, um, this mentality too. a different image that I've, that I've liked is uh, to realize that they're captive to that sin right now. And so what I'm fighting is the sin that's enslaving them so that I can free them. Like never is, there's not a single human being on this planet that is to be my enemy. No, right, sin right, right. them is often the enemy and I'm trying to help free them from that. Now, obviously in each case, there's, there's no easy flow chart of like, if this person struggles with sin A, you do B. Um, but that approach of knowing that that sin is doing them absolutely no good, that the sin is actually hurting one of God's precious children here, and so I'm going to do all that's in my power to free them or to, to be God's instrument. And in one person's case, it might be a long conversation. In another person's case, it might just be a Hail Mary. They never knew that I prayed for them. Um, but in every single time to um, to to really realize that in fighting the sin that is is eating away at them, that's the only way that I could ever actually love them. Right, right. That's really that's really good. I um, one thing I've realized, kind of like through all of this, like this pandemic and um, and then uh, the rioting and whatnot, what's been going on? It's it's almost <laughs> you. Sometimes people are not really ready to listen. 
You know what I mean? It's almost like there has to be this opportune time when like people are ready. Like I just noticed that even with COVID-19, right? Like some of us were like, is this it? I don't know. It just seems like a, a major divide and we need to bring everybody back together. <laughs> and, and that's, and I think exactly that, like listening is a lost art. And, and if we, if we Christians aren't the ones to pick it back up, then who will? Right. Like I, found, I found the listening to someone's story of how did you get from point A to point B and actually caring and and throughout that story to like continually in our hearts be saying like that that exact thing Lord, but for the grace of God like I would be in such a worse situation if it were me and right. and, and then I think that gives space in your soul for that that godly kind of compassion for the person and that divine hatred for the sin that that is uh, destroying the person um, so yeah if we could if if we could be the ones to take that step of saying like I'm going to listen to you to like what brought you to think this or to like behave this way and maybe realizing and I might not be given the chance to respond. I might not be able to like say, oh, and this is what I think. They might not care, but yeah. but I'm gonna because God's calling me to. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I need to just sit with that for a second. Um, and then uh the other question I had was uh, about like radical faith during these times. Um, any suggestions for us, like what we can do or what we can be doing during this time? What, what radical faith, what that looks like? I think what it looks like is in large part what we just did. Uh, I, I think we forget how much, faith it takes to pray a rosary well because it's not it's not some incantation or some kind of formula that we um, know exactly how it works it's not something that you can pick it apart and know the mechanism and say like oh yeah I get it but for how much we don't know how the rosary works we know that it works we see the the net effect that that entrusting all of kind of the the worries and the uh, the difficulties and the struggles, uh, as well as the hopes and dreams and all that, entrusting all of that to Our Lady, it, it increases our faith in a way that few devotions that I've ever tried or seen really do, because she's the one that taught us faith in the, in the most beautiful way. She's the one who taught us what it's like to say yes, not knowing what it's going to look like, to just say like, okay, I... First, I don't think I'm worthy. Second, I have no idea how this is going to unfold. But third, I know that if God's calling me to this, I'd be a fool to say no. And, and if she taught us that in the first joyful mystery that we prayed today, then she's going to teach us how to do it in, in our various um, in our various situations in life. That's great. I always like to think, um, you're right she was the first to really show us radical faith and what that is and what that looks like. Yeah. Well, the other thing is to just read through scripture. Like yeah. that if there's one message that echoes throughout every page of scripture, it's people having that kind of a faith. You saw all the forerunners to Mary and all the holy patriarchs and all those who either had that great faith or showed us how terrible life is without it. Um, and then, of course, that first apostolic band going out in faith. So I think that can help bolster our faith as well as even just reading through the Gospels. I think we forget to do that very often because we think, oh, I get that at church. But right. to just read beginning to end through a Gospel reminds us, wow. That's right. the God that I get to connect to in prayer. That's the God who's going to carry me through this. Okay. Yeah. I have no reason to fear here. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's really great. Thank you, father. I don't know if you guys have any more questions for father, but, um, maybe they do, maybe they don't, but, um, Oh, thank you. God bless you too. Yeah. They're so funny, especially when you said, oh, you're all going to hell. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was 
<laughs> hey, I hope not too many people get uh, disconnected at that point. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, we do do rosary for National Peace Day. Um, oh, give my. Oh, how to find your calling? Yeah, that's an often. That's an often asked question. Um, right, discernment. How do you figure out your vocation or what is God's will in their life? How do they know what they should be doing? I think her exact question was how to find your calling. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, well, I think the, the first and most fundamental thing is you're not going to find it if you don't have a prayer life. If you don't attune your, your ears to the voice of God, you're never going to be able to distinguish it from all the other voices that are competing for your heart. Uh, and so to have that regular connection with him in prayer that then l allows for one of the many good options to maybe start to look a little bit more attractive, start to realize that it starts corresponding to some of that, those deeper desires in your heart that maybe at first blush you didn't realize you had. That's at least yeah. how it was for me in my vocation is I never thought priesthood growing up, but then once I opened that possibility up and prayed with it for a few years it started getting a little bit more attractive as time went on and for me it was a very slow blossom uh, of that um, of that vocation but one one point that I'll speak to with discernment is that God reveres the freedom he gave us more than anybody else does and so he like often we want him to just kind of force us into what his will is going to be. We say like, no, just tell me what I got to do and, yes. and just take away all the other options. And he says, I didn't create you to be a slave. I didn't create you to be a robot that I can pre-program. No, I'm going to give you a choice. And so often he leaves us at the fork of the road and we hate it. We hate that because we hate to have to choose. But he right. says, no, I want you to take a first and a second and then a third step in a direction sometimes he leaves us at 50 50 and it's infuriating mm -hmm. but it's because he wants us to go in faith in a direction and to trust that if we're going in the wrong one he'll let us know mm -hmm. so sometimes he's more vocal with his no's than with his yeses uh and, and so he'll let us go and yeah. we could just keep going in the silence until he says all right thanks for trusting me now turn around it's, I was thinking of like, I asked my eight year old one day, I was like, what do you think God wants? What does he want for us? And he said, freedom. He wants, he wants you to be free. Ooh. And you're exactly right. Like we think we want to know because we always want control, but like we really don't want to know, right? Because yeah. yeah. we don't want every step planned. Oh, that's so good. Thank you. Thank you for, for uh, liberating us that. <laughs> Um, all right. Um, so can we end on a, a blessing? Could uh, Absolutely. Blessing? Yeah. Thank I, you so I, much. I, right. I did you. see one other question that was about whether a non-Catholic Bible was fine. Uh, yes, it's what, whatever Bible you have, that's the best Bible for you to read right now. I mean, yeah. yes, with time, you might want to get one that is a Catholic Bible because it has a few more books and sometimes there are tiny little translation differences, but don't let the fact that your Bible doesn't say Catholic on it, keep you from reading it. It's better to read the Word of God than not, uh, even if there might be tiny translation differences. And usually the differences are pretty minor. All right, so now the blessing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Through the intercession of all the saints in heaven, through the intercession of the most blessed mother, all the angels, every single one of your guardian angels, may Almighty God bless you abundantly, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, real quick question. So when you were trying to discern to be a priest, were you doing, you said you were praying a lot, but were you doing a lot of listening, like just silent time? I'm really bad at that kind of I know so much, but yeah, like that's <laughs> um, what I need to do every day, yeah. Yeah, so I, I tried to incorporate that, but it was, it was, uh, 
it was the same period that I was starting to really get into reading scripture. So I would do a bit of that. Okay. I would journal a bit. And then I started getting really suspicious of like, wait a second. I'm kind of talking through all of these arguments in my head. Like, God, are you even there? Like, what are you? Why aren't, why aren't you speaking? And then it really hit me. Of course, his voice is going to sound like mine because he's speaking to me. And he knows the way that I think. And he knows the way that that I can walk through an argument. And so very often, he's that gentle, silent teacher who's letting me work through the problem. And, and it's and it's not that he's absent. It's that he's saying, this is the way that you grow. And the way that I reveal myself to you is sometimes through letting you struggle through it. And, and I'm silently, gently guiding you through that whole process. So I'd be yapping away, but it'd be him talking through that sometimes. Could totally relate to that. Yeah. This the silence is it's really hard, but I think it's so powerful that it's just hard to do. So, but this is wonderful. Thank you so much, Father Mike. Oh, it's a and, treat. <laughs> thank you so much, as always. Thank All you, right. God. God bless you. Take bless care of yourselves. Bye, guys. <laughs>